Good morning, good afternoon and good evening. My name is Mr. Badham for those of you that don't know and we are incredibly looking forward to meeting all of you in the future and I just want to welcome all you New Year Sixes to the Holmesdale School and in particular to the Holmesdale School Science Department. Down below you can see how happy we are and as it says we cannot wait to meet you. Within this PowerPoint I'm going to introduce you to our science staff tell you a little bit about them just so you can kind of get to know them as much as possible before you join us in September. I'm going to let you know that as a year seven what you'll be studying and also give you an idea of what that learning journey will look like for you. At the end there's a home experiment that I'm very excited to show to you and I really do hope you will take part in. Just move my face. Go here. So up first is Mrs Harris. She is a head of science at the school and also an assistant head teacher. I've worked with her for many years now and every single one of them has been a joy. And her favourite scientist is Charles Darwin. He is one that we'll be looking at very closely when you come to year eight, when we look at evolution. And as Mrs. said there, science is so important for those special reasons. It answers important questions about the world around us. Before teaching, she worked for a pharmaceutical company and was actually involved in a drug similar to Digitalis, which is one that you will look at in your GCSE. So that is Mrs. Harris. Up next, you have the pleasure of meeting me again. As I said, I am Mr. Badham. I am the second in charge of science, also an associate vice principal. Um, my favourite educational quote, and it's one that I really do think just emphasises what we're about as a science department. Education is not the feeling of a pale, but the lighting of a fire. We want you to come to our subject, we want you to love it. We want you to leave knowing more, but most importantly, we want you to gather that love of learning. My favourite scientist is Henrietta Lacks. Now, I've cheated a little bit here, because she's strictly actually not a scientist. She is a woman whose tumour cells were taken and have then contributed so, so much to society since then. There is also kind of a sad backstory behind that, and if any of you are interested, please do give it a look. Um, when I was doing my university degrees, I had to watch three autopsies, as it said at the bottom, and that was one of the oddest experiences of my life. I was also attacked by over like a thousand flies. I had to go into a little tiny room to collect the flies for uh, sequencing, to test them for forensics, and someone had left the cupboards open, and they were just circling around the uh, room. So what we had to do is we had to get a big vacuum, and literally try and suck them all up with a vacuum, just to get them out of there, really. Up next, we have Mr. Trudell. He is a teacher of science at the school and also our eco committee lead. As an eco committee lead, he will be looking at how to make our school more environmentally friendly. His favourite scientist is probably one of your favourite ones as well. It's Sir David Attenborough. He produces documentaries like Planet Earth and has been responsible for introducing science to the masses, really. Bit of a hero, and he's definitely a hero of Sir's. As Sir uh, says, science is a subject that can be explored forevermore. We want you to come to us, we want you to love science in year 7, but love it in year 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and keep taking that love of science forward. Okay, I'm next is Mrs Val. She's a science teacher at our school and also a science club coordinator. For those of you that really love her science, she is your lady to go to. She does some fantastic experiments. Uh, on a Friday lunchtime this year, she's had a science group come in and do some uh, extracurricular activities, and it's absolutely fantastic. Her favourite scientist as well is uh, David Attenborough. As I said, he is a real staple scientist. He's a bit of a hero to our department. Um, Miss also used to work in scientific research, and she was once in charge of 60 tomato plants. I don't know what she was doing with tomato plants, but that would be a question to ask Mrs Vale when you come in. Okay, up next is Miss Crane. Miss Crane is both a science and a math teacher at the school. Her favourite scientist is Brian Cox, and I think he's also a really good example of a scientific educator. He has a lot of shows similar to David Attenborough, and really uh, puts science out there for everyone to enjoy. As she said, before she became a teacher, she used to work in an outdoor education centre, and used to teach science in the great outdoors. We're really looking forward to her using these kind of techniques that she gained to look at teaching science in the great outdoors with you guys next year. 
Okay, up next is Mrs. Baxter. She is a science technician at the Homestyle School. And without these guys, our science department just would not run. They are so, so crucial. They ensure you get your practicals in time. They practice the practicals so they can be as amazing as possible. They are so important to the running of our school and any school out there. And once again, before working in the school, she was an analytical scientist for over 13 years. And I think that's one thing that I really like about our science department. We all had scientific careers before coming into teaching. And I think it really gives us a uh, advantage. It gives us stories that we can use when teaching you. Up next we have Mr. Strickland. He's joining us next year as a part-time science technician. Similar to what I said about Mrs. Ba Ms. Baxter, these technicians are so important. You will see them coming in and out of lessons to help us, to help you, and just without them, science would not run as smoothly as it does. So, this is our science department. I just want you to get you to not used to the faces, get you not so you know who you would have, because normally we'd have you in to see you, but obviously that's not possible right now. Okay, now I've obviously spoken quite a lot about our science department. I'm slightly biased, and obviously I love it. But I am slightly biased on that. And so I thought it was really important actually to share what not just I think, but what our current year seven students think about science as well. Let me just move my face. I'll probably move it again in a minute, but there you go. Okay, so we asked our students, our year seven students, what they've enjoyed about science this year. There was loads of responses, but I've just picked out a few of them. They like the fun teachers and experiments. We are fun and we do love an experiment in science. Another one said, I like learning new things in science that are all around us, and I like how my teacher is challenging me and other students to achieve as much as possible. My favourite thing this year is doing the space retrieval lessons to help us remember what we've learned. We have a big push on memory and remembering in science. It's so crucial. Another student said, I like how our, student, our teacher is kind to us, and when we misbehave, we get told off straight away. I like how he's strict when he needs to be. Our whole class like his science lessons. Once again, we had even more responses, so I've included another page. Um, my favourite thing we have learned this year would be the drug development, as it was interesting in how much work goes into making a new drug. I've enjoyed being able to express myself and get along with most of the classmates with work we may not understand but need help with. I've enjoyed all the subjects we cover in science this year. It's really inspired my interest further in science. Now, we also asked, what would you say to current year sixes about science at the Homestyle School? And they had another fantastic response. I would say that the science department is amazing. I mean, thank you. And so are all the staff. Science is a hard subject, but it gets easier, so don't give up. Such an important message, that message of resilience. You've just got to keep on going. I would say that you may find it difficult at times, but if you push yourself and really take in what you learn, you can come a long way, and you have lots of support in the process of learning here. It's very funny and if you are good, then you get to do lots of experiments. Very true. Science at the Homestyle School is fun and interesting. You will learn at least one new thing every lesson and it is taught in a way you can, will remember it. So, okay, we had once again more responses. Science at the Homestyle School is exciting, informational and adventurous. You learn a lot in science that you would never know. And it's fun in lessons and fascinating to see and learn all these things and test experiments. To so always look forward to science because it's definitely one of the best lessons of the day with so much fun things to do and learn at the same time. And also you learn about a lot of interesting facts and do fun experiments to help you learn about a certain topic you are doing. So as you can see, our students had a lot of positive things to say about us, but we have a lot of positive things to say about them as well. And we're looking forward to next year having the same positive to say about you. So I just wanted to give you an idea of what you would be covering in year seven. So obviously you'll join us. We start the year looking at investigative skills. We'll start with a few weeks of practical work just to make sure you're safe in the lab, you can get your Bunsen burner license and to give you the investigative the skills you need to carry you throughout the year. We'll then go to a biology topic and look at cells. That'll be animal cells, plant cells, specialized cells, things like red blood cells. We'll then look at energy. It's one of our first and key physics topics. We'll look at the different stores of energy. We'll look at kinetic gravitation. We'll look at different energy amounts in different foods. We then go to chemistry topics. 
we're going to look at atomic structure and this is about the world around us really atoms surround us there are billions and billions of them just floating around you there billions and billions making up this table this laptop they are so crucial we'll then go to the scary scientific of bioenergetics which trust me is really easy we'll look at photosynthesis and respiration now after that we'll come to the periodic table a lot of you may already know what the periodic table is and it's really great to see mrs val will host a challenge to see who can learn the most elements on that periodic table after that we come to a physics topic in forces we will look at experiments such as the effect of friction we might look at Hooke's law as well it's where you you do an experiment with a can't think of any words now you do an experiment with a clamp stand you attach a spring to it and you see how much it can extend we'll then look at chemical reactions a favorite of everybody we'll be looking at acids and alkalis uh, how they react with different substances and how we can test for them after that we look at electricity we'll have a go at making circuits series circuits parallel circuits and we'll learn about maybe electricity in the home around us as well after that is infection and response we'll look at disease illnesses how we can treat them how we can stop them spreading and i think this is such a crucial one at this time Finally, we come to adaptations. That is looking at animal and plant adaptations. And I think this is actually my favorite unit. I'm so excited for you to be doing this unit next year. We've chosen some fantastic animals and plants for you to look at, and I really do hope you enjoy it. Finally, onto everyone's favorite part of science, the experiments. Today, we're gonna to be looking at a red cabbage indicator experiment. Below is an equipment list, I will just talk you through it. So first of all, you need some red cabbage. You only need one leaf of it, just a small chunk. About that much is completely fine. But what's really great about this, as well as red cabbage, it works with blueberries. It might work with uh, tomatoes. It works with black currants as well to an extent. Now, I think a lot of vegetables will work and I've just not tried them all yet. If you want to try any others and get in contact with me, please do and let me know because I would love to know. You'll need boiling water. You'll need a knife. Just a butter knife is completely fine. You'll need a spoon. You'll need two mugs. Gone for a periodic table one. You need a white plate, cling film, and a mixture of different household substances. Plate. So the household substances you might use today, you might use lemon juice, vinegar, lemonade, salty water, mouthwash, disinfectant spray you could use a uh, coca-cola as well ideally you want to use clear fizzy drinks it's easier to see the color change at the end so clear fluids are generally better when it comes to this experiment okay before we get on with the experiment today i just want to talk you through some of the risks so you will be using a knife or scissors to cut up your red cabbage or whatever vegetable you choose to use please do not use this without adult supervision as well as that, the same is for the boiling water. Please only use it with adult supervision, as I do not want any of you to burn yourselves. So some of the substances you are using today are irritants. For example, the disinfectant spray will be an irritant. The risk is small because you will only be using small drops, but please make sure an adult keeps control of the bottles and students only have access to a tiny, tiny amount. Okay, so I'm gonna take you through the different steps now. Step one is to finally chop that red cabbage. Please feel free, by the way, to pause the video at any time so I don't rush ahead. You're then gonna place it in a mug and pour the boiling water over it. You leave it to steep and cool down and then pour off the liquid. So, what I'm going to do now, I have cut my red cabbage up I'm going to place it into a mug and place it into my mug. I would advise you doing it on a table as opposed to what I'm doing it now. I'm just doing it so you can see it and missing the mug an awful lot. Also, sorry about that noise. So after that, you've got your red cabbage in the mug. You're going to pour boiling water into it just to cover that red cabbage. 
you might see it goes a nice blue colour straight away. What you will do now, you need to leave that to heat up the red cabbage and leave it to cool down. I'm going to leave mine now for about five minutes. So leave it for about five minutes, please. Okay, you've left it to cool hopefully now for five minutes. What you now want to do, you want to pour off the liquid. You want to separate the liquid from the uh, red cabbage. In order to do that, what I am going to do, in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour from one into the other. Using a spoon just to separate the red cabbage from the now cool liquid. Now this does make a bit of a mess. I would be prepared to make it a little bit messy, maybe do it in a uh, sink because I've just got it all over my desk. Well, actually, Mrs. Val's desk, because I'm using her desk today. Paper towels. You'll end up with a nice amount of blue liquid. Okay, step two. You need to prepare the plate you're going to use. You can put your mug of water to the side for now and just leave it to the side. You need to get your plate and what you're going to do, you're going to wrap your plate in cling film. Wrap it nice and tightly. Okay, so your plate should look like this. It's covered in a layer of cling film. It's just because some of the chemicals you're using, you wouldn't really want them on your plate so you want to eat off them afterwards. So just cover it with this uh, cling film to keep it safe. Okay, what you then do, use a pen, I want you to write the names of the substances you are going to be using. Can be a bit fiddly, but don't worry about that. Just so you can track it afterwards and know where you've put the different ones. So I'm going to be looking at lemon juice, I'm going to be looking at disinfectant spray, I'm going to be looking at lemonade, and pure water. So, hopefully now you've got your plate labelled, you've got your plate clean filmed and you're ready for the next step. Okay, step three is to let the magic happen. This is where we really see what's going to go on in this experiment. So in this experiment, what we're actually looking at is acids and alkalis and different substances in your health will be either acid or alkali and we can use vegetables like red cabbage to show that because they contain a special pigment known as anthocyanin. So what you will do you will place a drop of cabbage indicator by each label. You can do that in different ways. If you own a pipette, use a pipette. If not, you can just use a small little teaspoon and scoop a little tiny bit out and put it by the correct label. That's what I'm just doing now. So, you want to keep them spaced out so they don't run into each other and also want to keep them fairly small. You want to put one just as a control, maybe in the centre, so you know what it looked like beforehand and therefore you can clearly see any colour changes that occur. You're then going to add the household chemicals, okay? So I'm going to add my first one in now. You can do it in whatever order you want, okay? So hopefully, as soon as you've done that, you've started to see some of these colour changes that occur. You should hopefully get some fantastic colours being made. Already on my one, I've got some purples, I've got some greens, I've got some reds, I've got some light blues. Okay. Hopefully, this is all working. If you want to do more, go back, go through it again and try some different chemicals. See how many ones in your house will change colour with your cabbage or blueberry or whatever vegetable indicator you have done. So, finally, last thing. If you have any questions about anything you have done today, anything we've discussed, please get in touch with me at the email address is there. Drop an email there and just ask to speak to Mr. Badham and it will go on to me. Also, I would love and, and I'm being honest here, I'd really want to see the experiments you've done. Please, 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 please send them over. 
send the images to the office, they will send them on to me. I'd really like to see what you're getting up to. Finally, Mrs. Val asked me to share this with you. The link at the bottom takes you to some of the current opportunities for home learning about science that are available from the Natural History Museum. It's looking at things like fossils, looking at animals and plant adaptations. It'd be a really good time if you're interested in that kind of thing to go and look it up now. Guys and girls, my last thing from me is a massive thank you for listening. It's been an absolute pleasure to do this today and I'm looking forward to seeing all your bright, happy, smiley faces as soon as possible. Any questions, please get in touch. Goodbye from Mr. Badham.